We are good to go. My name is Julie Murray, and I'm super excited to welcome you all tonight to our virtual cocktail party held the night before our philanthropy summit each year as a way to thank speakers, sponsors, and the advisory committee for all that you've done to make the summit so special. So we know that there are so many things going on throughout the country with the fires on the West Coast and in the Southeast, the floods, COVID throughout, and so much more. However, just for an hour, we invite you to sit back, relax with a glass of wine, a glass of water, a cold beverage, and be inspired by what we've put together as a special thank you for tonight. And at this point, I'd like to introduce you to the amazing leader from Moonridge who organizes this summit with a team, who also leads our Greater Good Council and Nevada Corporate Giving Council in Reno and this summit, Heather Libinati. Thank you so much, Julie. Good evening, everyone. The Philanthropy Leaders Summit Committee, Julie and I are so grateful to be connected with you all tonight for an uplifting virtual reception as we build momentum for tomorrow's big day. I have the pleasure of doing roll call and giving you an idea of who is currently with us this evening and who will also be joining shortly. As I call your name, please feel free to share a greeting in the chat box. Tonight, we will have Jeremy and Melissa Aguero, Emery Aronson, Chris Askin, Stacy Asteriaitis, Carolyn Barbash, Diane Barrett, Amy Berry, Lauren Beso, Michael Brazier, Mark Bruce, Cindy Carano, John Crispins, Abby Dalla, Wendy DeMonte, Teresa DiLoretto, Diaz Dixon, Cindy Dreibelbis, Chef Mark Esty, Nancy Fennell, Bruce Ford, Ashley Foster, Zane Fry, Julie Gilday Schaefer, Valerie Glenn, Kelly Goodman, Jenny Harding Davis, Victoria Hart, Suzanne Hendry, Montana Lechner, Puna Mather, Nancy McCormick, Janet Mello, Chrissy Menacucci Benna, Kurt Miche, Stacey Montooth, Joel Muller, Aaron Mulvaney, Julie Murray, Katie Nanini, Sherry Netzel. We've got a good group here tonight, you guys. BJ North, Christy Overgaard, Jane Raley, Connor Robison, Susan Sack, Phil Satry, Melissa Schultz, Peter Stanton, Paul Stoll, Nikki Tatalovich, Kathy Trachop, we're almost there, Greg Willitis, David Walker, Abby Whitaker, Alyssa Wood, and last but certainly not least, Annie Zucker. Welcome everyone. If I missed your name, please hop into the chat box to say hello. This evening's reception and tomorrow's summit would not be possible without our amazing sponsors and their unwavering support. Thank you to Nevada Gold Mines, Brownstein Hyatt, Barber Shrek, NV Energy, City National Bank, Nevada Business, Renown Health, PBS Reno, The Abbey Agency, Wells Fargo, Edon, The Bruce Family, The Mulvaney Family Fund, Dixon Realty, and Joel Muller with Edward Jones. Now, on to a very brief overview of this evening. At this time, we are in a Zoom webinar, which means that we cannot see or hear you. We would, however, love to encourage you to look to the bottom of your screen at this time to see three different buttons. The first is the chat symbol, followed by the raise hand symbol and the Q&A symbol. Tonight, we will only be utilizing two. First, the chat box. This is how we engage with each other. And the second is the Q&A button, which should be to the far right. This is your portal to share any specific questions of our amazing speakers tonight. Before I, before I kick it back over to Julie so that she can introduce our awesome hosts, we know that some of you have decided to purchase ingredients ahead of time. We hope you will enjoy following along with Chef Mark and Poonam. For others who may have poured themselves a much needed beverage, we hope you will be able to sit back and relax as Julie mentioned. For everyone, we hope you soak in an engaging conversation between two wonderful leaders. Back to you, Julie. Good evening again, and thank you, Heather. So it's hard to believe that it was just a year ago that we were in the home of Kathy Trachok for such a delightful reception for the speaker sponsors and advisor committee. Fast forward 12 months and we have been through a lot. So I'm super grateful for this moment tonight to have two very special leaders do something that we like to call, and we did get this idea from Robin Hood in New York, an unplugged conversation about philanthropy. So tonight, our two special guests that will be speaking are brought to you because so many of you have said, we want to learn more about Poonam 
have more time with her, and the same about Chef Mark Este. And I will share with you a secret that Poonam and I, as sisters from another mother, neither of us are very good cooks, so I give a special shout out to Poonam for being so adventurous to doing a cooking demonstration in front of 60 friends. So a little bit about our two co-cooks. So Mark Este, um, met Mark through Poonam and Elizabeth Blau and my work with Delivering with Dignity and kept hearing about this rock star leader in Northern Nevada who is doing so much good. Mark is an award-winning chef, restaurateur, and visionary on a mission to reinvent dining culture as we know it. Este owns Liberty Food and Wine Exchange in downtown Reno, the Union in downtown Carson City, Shea Louis inside the Nevada Museum of Art, the historic Overland Restaurant and Pub, and recently opened Cucina Lupo in Carson City. He is also the managing partner at Campo Mammoth. He's been featured on the Food Network and Cooking Channel, is a James Beard Award nominee, was awarded the Best Restaurant by Esquire, and was honored as Entrepreneur of the Year by the Reno Gazette Journal. Mark is going to be talking about philanthropy and cooking tonight with Puna Mather, and I know she's gonna try and stop me, so I'm gonna go super fast. Watch, she, she never lets me brag about her, but Puna, as you know, has her own business as a speaker, trainer, and writer, she also serves as the executive director of the Elaine Wynn P. Wynn and Family Foundation. And in the spring 2020, Poonam co-founded two emergency initiatives to combat the crisis created by the coronavirus. The first one I shared a little bit about a moment ago, delivering with dignity that combats the crisis of food insecurity during coronavirus. The other one that I know she's been putting in 16 hour days on is the important role she's playing with connecting kids, bridging the digital divide in education. Poonam formerly was an officer of NV Energy following 13 years with MGM where she served as an officer, Vice President, Corporate Diversity and Community Affairs. So I am so delighted to turn it over to you, Poonam and Chef Este for a fabulous evening. Take it away. Hello, Julie. Chef Mark, Chef Mark. Hello, handsome. What's happening? How are you, Poonam? Listen, we're gonna add one more thing to your incredibly impressive roster of accomplishments. You are gonna also tonight become a magician because you're gonna make me cook something that I'm gonna be able to eat at the back. Uh -huh. So okay. let's do this. Let's do this thing. That'll be my biggest accomplishment yet, so. So I hope, and, and I, you know, we have no idea how many of you are joining us. We hope you're joining us because you've got the ingredient list. Um, and Mark, let's just do this in some unplugged version. I'm not even sure what that means, but. Okay. No cords and no plugs are allowed, apparently. No um, cords, no plugs. And I'll take us through a few, a few pointers. And in between the pointers as we go and make this risotto, which times out perfectly for our time, you and I can go back and forth, and I want to find out more about you. Thanks. That sounds a bit like a, what my doctor says, but OK, let's do this thing. What I love, um, and I want to just honor um, and celebrate my sister from another mother, Julie, who's uh, Grace and humanity are always what she leads with. So thank you, as you always do, for bringing us together. And yes, a lot has changed in the last 12 months. Oh, what a 12 months it's been. And as I heard Julie, as I listened to Heather, who is the best list reader I've ever encountered, uh, what was also really clear to me is that it wasn't just a year ago that we were at the Trey Chalks. And as I heard the names of all of you, we are back together. So connections can be different. Uh, because of COVID, but connections cannot be broken because of COVID. So welcome to all of you, PLS Reno. This is, I don't even know what year it is. It just feels like home. Um, sorry that you're only today being able to breathe air that's actually breathable. And uh, let's hope that you don't have locusts and whatever else is going on. So just grateful for the connection. Come on, let's make you a uh, magician, Chef Mark. Let's go. All right, so I'm going to start off with some really bullet point basics to get anyone who's cooking at home, and most, mostly you, Poonam, to get us started, okay? So at our, at our stove top, I have our mushrooms, I have some salt and pepper, I have some thyme, I have an onion, okay? I have some butter, olive oil, cheese, all right? 
and I have two pans. I enlisted the help of uh, a famous Las Vegas chef to heat, have you put a pot of boiling water on your stove, Puna. I saw that. It's on there. So, you have water on your stove? You're home free, baby. You're home free. Hey, boiling water, successfully. Check. Okay. <laughs> Next, let's go on to the next project. Okay. So, so let's turn this into, um, I also want to get, I, I know half those names who are, who are watching out there. I hope you're cooking at home. Uh, I miss seeing everyone's face at the museum. I miss all the events we do in Nova Nevada, but I'm really glad to be a part of this, and I'm honored that you asked me to be here, and I'm honored to be able to be uh, talking to Poonam again, who I absolutely love. So I'm going to start us off, and then we'll do a little bit of talking. So I'm going to heat up my pan right here. It's my risotto pan. Okay, I'm gonna put that on about a medium heat. Okay, put them. So medium right. heat would be like a, on a five, right? Or a four? Five. five. Oh, thank you very much. Got it. Okay. Got it. Next, next, I have my mushrooms. I have my boiling, my water that's simmering. I'm gonna make a stock here because I'm making a mushroom risotto. So I'm going to take my mushrooms, take the stems off, and put them into the stock, okay? The stems you're putting in the stock or the little cap? Just the stock. Just the stems, okay? Just the stems. Check. Okay. So I'm next. Gonna, I'm gonna do that. One little trick that you don't need to, this is more so for just down the road. To clean the mushroom, I put it in a bowl of water. And I just let the mushroom sit on the top and I take them out and all the kind of particles fall off that's the way to clean a mushroom without soaking it. So all my dirty water just goes right away. So that would have been awesome to know about an hour ago, chef. <laughs> okay. So now I have my mushrooms. Two little stalks. Okay. A little stalk over here. Okay. I'm going to take some of my thyme. I'm going to put that in the stock. How much of that? What? What? See, that's what chefs do. Is you don't measure. You just do stuff like that. That's what. So a bunch of time to have there, right into the stock. Half of it. Yep. Right into the stock. Look how well I'm doing. Doing this is so far going right. really well. I'm feeling quite confident. Okay. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna do. We're gonna cut an onion. Oh lordy. Okay. okay. Well, before we cut an onion, we have our cutting board. Yep. We have a towel. A yep. Wet towel. Oh, wet towel. Okay. Yeah. So, so your cutting board doesn't slide. Wet towel avoids your cutting board from sliding and us having to go to the hospital the next morning. So, Chef, here's my cutting board. It's the thing that goes in the dishwasher. Oh, okay. It's super cool. So put a little towel underneath it so it doesn't slide. Okay. A little wet towel underneath. It won't slide on you. And then even that's cutting board, that's a perfect cutting board. It's great because I've got a bunch of them and they go in the dishwasher. For yes. All the cutting I do not yes. do. All right. So, let me take our knife. Okay. If you want to have a, if you have a steel, if you don't, it's okay. Put them, but I'm going to sharpen my knife like this. Okay. You don't feel comfortable with that? Wow. Okay. That's just a, that's a steel to straighten the edge. Wow. Okay. I'm going with my dull edge, boss. Okay. I'm in. Yes. Okay. Let's cut off the, the top and the bottom. Yeah, your edge is a little sharper than mine. That's taking some elbow grease. Got it. And take, take the two things and put it in your sock. Oh, all right. That was we don't waste way. anything. We never yeah. waste anything. That's great. Next, cut the onion in half. Done. Right. Take one half, put it in the sock. With the skin and everything. Yes. Which is, this is good recycling for the world. Yes. Yeah. And peel, peel off the other side. Yep. Yeah. Put that in the sock. Oh. You're doing great, Poonam. You're doing great. My skin was a bit like skinny jeans on my onion, so it just took a minute. Okay. It's done. Jump off the second floor to get into them. I get that. <laughs> okay, so then I have my onion. We're going to dice the onion, okay? Okay. Carefully. Hold my fingers proper right now. I'm doing a cut skills class where we cut across. Right. I, yeah, that I don't do. Okay. Yeah. This is like when I call a kid and say, hey, kid, come try this one. You're welcome to bring any help you need. Well, so we're just going to dice. So, how, like, I don't even, when you say dice, how big is that? Like, 
I get the <laughs> cube of some sort. Well, we'll go Brunois, one eighth by one eighth. But just a rough chop will do. Okay. That, I'm, a, I'm doing a great rough chop. I love it. Yes. I'm a natural at a rough chop. Love it. It turns out. I don't need to cut too, so you're going to be good. All right. So. In my pan. I'm going to add some, some butter. Okay. How much? Maybe about half a, tea, uh, about a teaspoon. Nice whack. So I'm just going to put all my. What did you do with your onions? Oh, they're still on your cutting board. I cut that. I cut that one onion. I cut that half onion, and then I'm gonna put some oil and uh, olive oil. Yep. And butter in my pan, and I'm gonna add the onion right to that. And it's about a teaspoon of butter, you said, into my pan. And how much olive oil? How about a, a border? Oh. Oh. See, that's what chefs do. They're like that. And that's not an amount. That's not an amount. For those of us that don't have the gift, that makes no sense. Whoa. Oh, did you just watch the save of the onions? Because here's what doesn't work. I just melted. See, this is what happens. I just melted my, my okay, so I need another pot. Can you grab another pot for me? the biggest. Vegas Knights could have used you the other night to stop some of those shots. Nice save. Uh, listen, I saved it. I saved it. I'm feeling uh, quite plucky and proud. Um, and this is sort of how my <coughs> kitchen experience goes. So this is not unusual. So that's going to be the thing I will have to clean up next is the melted thing. Ah, the nice. um, but I'll Google it, so it's fine. So I've got my um, another saucepan okay. right in there. Olive oil's in there, and now I'm going to throw my onion in there? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. So we're going to saute that nice and slowly for about a minute. Okay. While we chop the mushrooms. Do I want to see it? Um, so here's a nice thing about having my little reservoir of cutting boards. There's another one. Perfect. Perfect. I'm, I'm standing close so I can see in your kitchen. Do I? You're doing great. I feel quite chefy. Yeah, you, you look chefy. I feel quite chefy. All right, what's next? Mushrooms. Okay. Got it. That's on. That's on a nice medium heat. So those are going to saute. So be cooking at home. You're not trying to add any color. You're just sauteing them down. We're going to get some mushrooms next. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take our mushrooms. Yep. We're going we're to just kind of rough chop. And by rough chop, I just mean just that. Just a really rough chop. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's like not even a that's not even a thing. I got it. That that's like chaos on a cutting board. I am good at that. Watch my rock chop. I have some shiitakes. I'm just gonna put the shiitakes in a small. I'm gonna put them in whole. I'm gonna take the stem off. I'm gonna put the stem in the stock and the mushrooms in and the and the mushrooms in with the onions. Okay. With the rough chop. My rough chop is particularly good. Put them outside. It's even more fun sometimes if you're at home. Sometimes I just break them. Sometimes I break them with my hands. Sometimes you break them with your hands. That's a very male thing to say. You don't need, you don't need to. Well, this is going into my, my smaller pot, right? Yes. OK, good. Got it? It's not like a sofrito. So we're, we're sauteing butter, oil, right? We have our onions, we have our mushrooms. OK? That's with our stocks on one side. Got the stock on one side. Yes, sir. Okay. You're doing great. What's that? Next up, I'm going to put some salt, some kosher salt. Kosher salt. Okay, I have some. Okay. There it is. So we we'll need some oh, kosher salt. With my, with my onions and mushrooms. Translate some kosher salt into something. Is that, is that what, some kosher? A pinch. A pinch. That's what they say into the stock, right? What goes into the stock? One goes into the stock, and one goes into your pot with the onions and mushrooms. And it's still a pinch, most places. Got it. All right? Got it. All right, you're looking good. OK, next here, you're going to add your two cups of risotto. Oh, great. Here they are. That's going to go, in, once you get, that's going to go into your, um, your stock pot. Excuse me, your pot with the onions and mushrooms, all right? I've got a two-cup measure. Well, I got a one cup measure. I'm just going to do it twice. So one cup. Perfect. Where? 
You, we're good to go one cup on this, Russ. Unless you want to make some for all the kids, too. Do two cups. I'm going to make leftovers. This is going to be so good. So, yes, please. So, two cups. And where are we putting this? In, with the, in the smaller pot with the onions and the mushrooms. Got it. So, they haven't done much. They're still pretty warm. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. But it's not in. So we're going to, yep, put them in. Done. Then move the, move the rice around to coat it with the oil and the butter that's in there, and everything starts to kind of cook. Got it. Good job. Okay, so next up for you is going to be we're going to we're going to cook this for about four minutes. So, Mark. Yeah, we're going to stir. Just going to give it a little stir. Maybe turn that heat up just over five. Maybe put it on a six. Okay. To six it is. Thank you for translating that into English. I appreciate well, that. Yeah. I don't even speak. I don't even speak English. I'm I'm really lucky to do that. So Mark, I do well. So while we we got a few minutes. Yes. Um, no. You are some cross between a unicorn and a humanitarian and a, a an artist and a pragmatist. You are a whole lot of things. And we met earlier this year. You've been one of the gifts and blessings of COVID for me. It was. I will never forget it in that first call. And we found you because of PLS, because of um, PLS Reno. You catered the event last year. That was an indelible impression left on many of us when we needed a restaurant leader for delivering with dignity. You were the guy. And the Lieutenant Governor and I got on a call with you and literally 30 seconds in, what you didn't know is that 30 seconds in, she texted me and said, it is him. He is the one. And so I want to just, Get, tell us about where, when I met you, you were doing all kinds of things. Business had been completely shut down. And your heart said, here's what I choose to do. I'm going to feed displaced hospitality workers. And I'm going to do it as hard as I can. And then we call you and say, hey, how about you know, triple threat, most vulnerable? You're like, I'm in. So where, who are you? Where does that come from? Well, uh, I'm gonna, let's make sure we keep stirring your pot, okay? Oh, I need to get shut from here. Uh, thank you for those kind words. Uh, I am a person who's just an average, an average person who's trying to do the right thing. Um, I have great parents who taught me the right way to do things. I associate with the best business people I possibly can and the best community members I can. And when Abby called me and said the LG's involved, and I knew Moonrich through David Walker in the museum, and all the great museum donors who are on this end tonight, and all the great giving people in Northern Nevada, you know, they give with their resources and finances and time. And I've always said, I'll give as much time as I possibly can. And if one day there's financial resources to come, I can help them raise financial resources with cooking. So it's a natural fit for me. So when food is used to celebrate so much, and then I think food now has become something to also hold us together. I'm from the East Coast, from Boston. You know, we do big wakes, big funerals. We have food to celebrate how sad we are. When we get married, people have food to celebrate how things are going, right? So during times of crisis, you know, food has really become the forefront of what America looks to. You know, you look at other programs around the country, and what you started, Puna, what you and Elizabeth and the crew in, North, in Southern Nevada started, is something to be uh, copied across America and for times to come. So it was a natural for me I was honored to be selected to be the person to be your, your wingman and work with the LG. And shout out to Michael Brugier who's on the call. He's on the phone. Michael, Michael remembered that like the first weekend we were working around the clock to lift up delivery with dignity in Reno. And this guy, just in the middle of a conversation, accidentally says, oh, oh by the way, I've just finished a seven day fast. <laughs> and now we do a shot of tequila. We were like, we love this man. Don't get uh, it. That's some fun. So, you know, yeah, this, this uh, pandemic has, I think, affected both of us and all of us on this call and all of us in the world, really, uh, personally and professionally. And I'm lucky enough, Buddha, to say that I got to this because really my personal, my personal life is part of my profession because I love what I do so much. And I take my cooking into my own home. And I was doing cooking demos with my kids and, you know, trying to just pass the time, if you will. And, uh, you know, the, the, the ability to answer this call was something that I was lucky to do. And look, it brought me closer to you. 
and I see a, a, a friendship till the day I die with you and supporting you and helping you and just kind of riding your coattails around. You know, everyone calls you the magician. You know, how do you, how do you keep yourself going through these times? Wow. Um, you know what? These times have been tough, right? The times have been tough. And what has made them tough, I've learned a lot about myself. Um, and maybe it's a function of having spent an awful lot more time by myself. Um, it's caused me to be really, I think, reflective of um, what makes me tick, who I am, what matters. And I think it has for a lot of people. It's also given me some different boundaries or maybe aware of boundaries that I control in terms of fear and my relationship to uncertainty. Because um, man, it's easy to get lost in all that I cannot control. And it's pretty hard that way. But uh, for me, one of the saving graces, I will tell you, has been all of you, like so many of you on this call, it's been delivering with dignity. It's been having a reason to get up every morning to do something that was not my own life, but something that put me in service of others, that allowed me to connect with and stay close to giving and energetic people. It's been a saving grace for me. So as this workaholic, thing has also been the elixir for my soul through this experience of COVID because I've been home. I mean, I'm not going places. And to be able to have the honor of being a founding member of Delivering with Dignity and now getting to work with Bill Satre and the, and the group that's going to make sure every kid in Nevada is connected. I think there's a lot to be said for being useful, right? And it gets me, if I'm not in my own head because I'm in service to someone else, then I'm not in my own head. And it's a place that fear, uncertainty, and all of that ick grow, right? Yeah. And so it's been, uh, yeah, it's been good. And I love, frankly, I haven't stepped out of yoga pants in six months. I'm wearing flip flop even now. I mean, there's like hashtag benefits of COVID, right? Well, one of the other benefits is you get to step two of this risotto right now, okay? You, you like the dogs, but you're such, you're such a good communicator. You're, you're amazing. We're gonna, we're gonna start to add some stock to this rice, okay? Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I just use this little strainer, if you have a little strainer here. Oh yeah, let me get it, hang on. I have too big a strainer, I have a little strainer. Okay, just start to put stock into the rice. Sorry, one more time. So I've got my strainer, I've got my ladle. Yep, go to that stock. Yep, put the, put the strainer over your, over your rice pan. Got it. You ladle, start to ladle a little bit of mushroom broth into the, into the rice, into the rice. Got it. You get a little sizzle. Oh, I do. Yeah. Look at that, on, on cue. Keep ladle, ladle about three more in there. Three more, got it. Okay. Then you're going to stir. You're going to stir that rice. Now we're on the clock for about 15 minutes, okay? Yeah, I am feeling like quite the chef here, by the way. This is like chef stuff. Yeah, you're doing it. Normally, normally my cooking is I got to figure out how many minutes to hit on the microwave. So this is right. like a big deal. So you can kind of turn that heat up a little bit because okay. I want to also be wary of the time. I'm gonna, we're going to turn that heat up just a little bit. Yep. I mean, our rice might be a little al dente, but if you're cooking along at home, you can kind of, you really want to start now and you want to put it on 18 minutes. So. Just to recap it for you, we, we, sauteed, we sauteed the mushrooms and the onions. We had a broth going. We added, the, after a little bit of sauteed onions and mushrooms, we added the rice. We cooked that for about five minutes. Then we started to add the stock, turned up the heat a little bit. We're going to cook that for 18 minutes. Puna and I might only do a little bit less. Because we're fast like that. We're going to cook that for 18 minutes. Once so we get around that time, that rice is going to be perfect. And I'll take you through the end finishing processes as we do that. Super. Chef, a couple questions. One, do I cover my risotto or I'm letting it sit open? Let it sit open. Okay. You want to stay there and keep stirring. We're going to keep stirring. I'm going to keep stirring. Question from Ginny. If she doesn't have fresh thyme, how much dry thyme should she use instead? Literally, like just let like an eighth of a pinch. Like just that's, a, that's not an amount, Chef. That's not an amount. An eighth of a pinch. This much. <laughs> relatively fleshy fingers. So. Is this? Hopefully that helps you, Jenny. The other thing is note to all that we use salted butter rather than unsalted butter, just so you know. Okay. Look at me giving chef directions now. That's amazing. So 
So it's a little dry in my room, so I'm gonna try to put in some more broth. Add some more broth. Slowly add some more broth. Okay. Because my broth looks quite beautiful. Yep, you get that broth is the key. That that rice, that risotto rice is called the Boreo rice. Okay, it's a medium grain rice. It's the second type of risotto. There's actually three types of risotto. A Boreo, most common, fancy one, carnaroli. Okay. Third one, via via nanone. No one uses that, it's only in Italy. The first one, a Boreo is the one we love the most. It's the most versatile. I believe those were triplets I went to high school with. Yeah. I don't remember the Mayflower. the key with the oh. Mayflower. Hey, buddy, I want to talk to you about one thing. You are an uh, employer of a lot of people. You are an advocate in the community. We are in the middle of um, a reckoning as a nation around social justice, around race relations. Um, we've got Stacey Montuz, who's going to be a, a panel presenter tomorrow, who is the advocate for Native American people in the state. Tell me what you uh, feel about it, think about it, what you're doing about it. Well, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, it's about time. And I think, and, and this time it's different, you know, in my, I'll, I'll be 50 this year. In my lifetime, I've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of different things happen over the, over the, uh, uh, over the years, different, you know, there's different uh, events that I've built out in my life, right? First one that I can kind of remember was like the Rodney King, and, and that's kind of a relationship that happened around that, and then police brutality, and just different things that have happened growing up on the East Coast and being transplanted out here to, uh, Lake Tahoe, Reno, Truckee, you know, we're a little isolated from, from a lot of those things. But this time around, for some reason, a lot, I feel moved. I think a lot of people are a lot more aware and a lot more is actually being done this time around. It's not being just forgotten about. It's not fake news. It's real. It's happening. And I think for us, we said, we made a little pact with our group and said, if we all take a bite, we can eat the whole thing. So if every one of us does a little bit of something, whether it's reaching out to somebody uh, less fortunate, whether it's reaching out and confronting racism, we see it, when we see it, talking about it openly, uh, having great hiring practices, training well, giving opportunity everywhere we can, uh, talking to people as much as we humanly can, supporting people who might have trouble understanding what's going on and not be willing to change, openly discussing things uh, as a group and saying things as a company, and to try to make sure that everyone's aware of social injustice and how we can make it socially acceptable and socially right by fixing these things. Those are a few of the small things our company has been doing. That's awesome. Um, high five to you, my, my man. Boom. Question from Kathy Trechok. Um, is there time only in the broth or do we put a little in our risotto? Great, great question. It starts with the broth. As we get near the end, and we can do it now, I just like to peel it off. Squeeze it between my fingers and put it in. And like, how many did you peel up? Did you like, two, two stems. Two stems. Finally, a very specific instruction. Thank you. You didn't say a pinch and a half. I was going to be a little bit different, okay? If I gave you all the rules, it wouldn't be as fun. <laughs> okay, so we're going to keep on adding broth, okay? Yeah, no, I'm doing that because it gets a little bit dry. And even I know that. Even I know that. But this, but this here, what you should see, what you should be seeing there, Puna, is a little, uh, almost uh, the rice, the rice soaks in the broth. It's, it, it's, it's, like it's changing a little, yeah, it's starting yeah. to look like it's edible. Yes, the starch is released. And that's the beautiful thing about risotto. It creates its own sauce. When I make risotto, people say, Oh, hey, what do you put cream in there? And I've never put cream in risotto in my entire life. Wow. It's against the rules. So because, you know why it's against the rules? Because it's too expensive. So you can make mushroom broth a lot cheaper than you can get heavy cream, right? You don't need all that fat in there. So the, the rice is the magic. And the flavoring, whether we use, uh, 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 I got asked at the beginning, can we use chicken stock? Absolutely. Veal stock, beef stock, plain water works. Uh, any veg stock works. Why not use, why not add in the scraps as you're cooking? You know, that's the Italian way, right? Yeah, you no, know, I love that we're using it all. Like, it's great. Yes. That's, that's part of delivering with dignity. The beauty of that is we're giving people restaurant quality food who are homebound and all the restaurants you have going on down there in, um, in Southern Nevada and us up here in Reno with Glenn Catering and our catering company and United Way and all the work they're doing organizing these food heroes. I mean, this is a, it's a, it's a pretty big operation. 
Isn't it? And, uh, it was well, great to see all the people so happy about the food and being able to deliver that food. Listen, it launched in, uh, uh, in Las Vegas, and that was, it gave us, like Julie and Elizabeth and I and a team of us, the opportunity to launch something and then leave it to the Lieutenant Governor who called just weeks later and said, I want this and we will lift it up. And Michael Brazier and Mark Este and the gang all got together. And that was a wonderful, I mean, a really wonderful experience to watch a community just embrace it, lift it and go so hard. And you then inspired Orange County, California to do it. So there is now a third delivering with dignity that is up and running in Orange County just because there are most vulnerable among us all over this country with no access to, it's not just the food, right? Because we're not delivering sort of, um, you know, FEMA meals, right? It is the point you just made, is the dignity of getting a chef prepared delicious meal does something as powerful for the soul as the nourishment of the ingredients do for the body. And that's and what the food, here of, that. the food here of coming in that, that social interaction that happens. One of my uh, one of my chefs, food and wife, is a food hero. Does deliveries two days a week, and sometimes she goes back and spends. You know, I hope this isn't she'll get in trouble for this. But she's about to spend ten minutes talking with some of the some of the people she dropped off food to, and she's done with her route because wow. they just wow. it doesn't good enough. She just stalks to the window because they're you know they have to stay socially distanced. But they, she enjoys visiting with them tremendously. So in our in our rice, I did want to talk about it. I've added salt and pepper again to the rice plot. Just want to build flavors, right? So we seasoned a little bit at the beginning, we're seasoning in the middle, we seasoned our broth, and we're building it again. So now I want to turn a spoon around, I can taste this as I go, okay? I'm starting to run a little low on my stock, but I think because we boiled off a bunch of it. You know, we're going to start to, if you're getting a little low on stock, we can start yeah. to add a little bit of butter, olive oil, and cheese. Oh, okay. Oh. But, but oh. we're going to do that. We're gonna do that off the heat. Okay. Off the heat. It's still looking pretty al dente. It's still looking pretty al dente. So, what did you give me permission to put in butter and olive well, oil? As well? If you're looking a little al dente, let's put a little water in there. Just, just put a little hot water in just to get it going. If you don't have any stock left. Okay. I will put some water in it. I can do that. But, well, I've still got some left. Okay. So I don't want to. I'm gonna put it in the stock. Poor because I'm not yet, but I'm getting there. This is funny. I've owned this ladle. I don't even know for how many years. And I think the only time we use it was for decorating Easter eggs. So I don't think it's ever been brought into service for anything materially like food related. How fun. My, my rice is getting, getting close enough where we can probably in the next few minutes start to kind of finish it off. We'll be a little al dente, but if we can get, I'm not sure how we're doing on time, but I know, okay, I see the time right there. I think we, I think we have until 6.20, so we can totally finish this. That's good. Not a, if, if, if anyone didn't want to pop in, I know it's 6.10, we might take questions, but I know, also know that we have until 6.20, so if we can keep going, we can make this thing all the way, Poonam. Let's do it. It's starting to stick a little bit. Give it, keep, keep giving it a stir. Keep stirring it around. Not burning though, that's good. Not burning. You can turn the heat down a little bit if it's, if it's getting a little too sticky. Okay. Go back to a five, go back to a five. Great, thank you. So when did you open your first restaurant, Mark? Uh, well, back in 19, uh, 2002, my first restaurant was called Moody's Bistro and Lounge in Truckee, California. Wow. Shout out to Abby Holton Whitaker who was on the call today. She was our PR, she was our PR firm. And oh she's, my yeah. She was a, she was a uh, hostess at um, uh, Bloom and Onion, wherever they served the Bloom and Onion. And she was doing her internship at a PR company up there in Truckee. And I'm just busting her chops by saying this. But uh, she came over and she did all our PR. And uh, believe it or not, we have Sir Paul McCartney come and sing in our restaurant just by chance. I cooked for him for a few different times, so. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So did you always know that that's what you were gonna do? No, I was a football player in college. And we, I'm, I'm kind of old, so back before cooking was cool, I wanted to become a chef, and everyone thought I was crazy. They said, what, have you lost your marbles? He does. I was like, yeah, kind of. So uh, I started cooking way before it was cool. Wow. And then tell me about, so you are now sort of on TV. We're going to get autographs because it'll be worth something someday. I can just feel it. Um, so yeah. tell me what that's all about, because that happened during the delivery with Dignity. You know, 
we got we had a I got I got lucky enough to have a show. Uh, I got pitched an idea. We did a show with uh, Cake House Media and a buddy Velasco's company. Buddy has a couple restaurants in Vegas all over the world, but uh, we made a show. We made a first season. We, we sent four in. We bought the season. We sent four in. They put one on and they said, "Hey, we want to re. We're gonna re. We're gonna reposition this in a little while." And that's we're waiting to hear what's coming next. I hear this happens all the time in show business, but whatever. So I'm, I went to, I got the show, I went to work. The show came out, I went to work. The show's not out, I went to work. <laughs> so how is, um, how is philanthropy and your sort of humanitarian spirit impacted or molded or affected the kind of chef you are? Or does it? That's a great question. Um, you know, we get asked, I, I, probably more so than many people realize, uh, and I'm sure bigger companies or other companies get asked and they think it's the most in the world too. But I probably say we get asked so much by so many. Come on out, I mean, gift cards, no problem, right? We have to actually put a number on them. We have a budget every month. We're allowed to give out as much. Uh, but you got my home to cook and you, can you go over here and do this and blah, 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 all this kind of stuff, right? And everyone says the same thing. It's gonna get you great notoriety. It's gonna get you great notoriety. I have a problem with saying no, for sure. But <laughs> as time has gone on, uh, we try to pick the right things. We try. We can't support everybody the same way, so we've chosen some some ones that were really close to our heart. So anything related to the Nevada Museum of Art, we support wholeheartedly. Uh, anything related to children, social justice, and other things in our community, in our downtown community, whether it's in Reno or our, our restaurants in Carson Valley, uh, we can really try to support all other local businesses also. So we'd rather show up with time, energy, effort. You know, a little pizzazz, a little fun, a little you know give something this way, uh, then, you know, buy, we don't buy tables and write checks. We show up and cook for those tables or try to donate with our expertise. And it seems kind of extra special that you would show it with time, my friend. Get it? Look yes. At it. Cool. Look at it. Boom, a little chef pun. Right. And I'm getting carried away. Um, so, someone so posed a question and the, and the question was to me, what foods do you like to have prepared for you when you want to be pampered? So here's, I mean, here's the truth. Is, I have stunned people with my ability to consume food. I mean, like stunned people with the sheer volume I can consume, with the depth of enjoyment that I experience, and it ma makes no difference what kind of food it is. So what I sort of, that's always been true. If, if it's sitting in front of me and someone is happy about it, I am gonna enjoy it like crazy. So it doesn't much matter. I have lots of um, hankerings for different kinds of food, and I go get it, right? So whether it's, sushi or steak or great salad, Italian food, it just doesn't matter. All kinds of ethnic food. Um, I just love prepared foods. And my brother-in-law is actually a world-class chef. He's a professor of English lit, but his real passion is he's a chef. So he gets to be a chef at home. And he lives in California. So every time I go, he literally will you know, prepare like crazy and I will consume like crazy. And both of us dazzle each other with our ability to deliver. Love. So he dazzles me with his, his sort of artistry in the kitchen, and I completely dazzle him with the fact that I can literally consume twice my body weight on a daily basis and live to tell about it. But I was wondering, I was wondering about your, your diverse household. Let's, let's give people a little kind of look into what's a typical day like, or night like, or dinner time, or breakfast time, or lunch time in your household. So it used to be chaos. Today it is serene because it is me in the house. Even the bunnies and the fish and the birds and the dogs and the cats aren't here. It's just me. But by the days, uh, I mean, I've got four kids and there were three of them that were sort of within 15 months or two years apart. And so that was um, a lot of staccato energy, right? When there was a lot happening simultaneously. Um, and so when they were going through their teenage years, my good Lord, on the weekends especially, we were the house where everyone stayed. So, I mean, breakfast was, I'd be like, you know, 24 eggs and I would just scramble up a storm and two pounds of bacon and two loaves of bread and a couple of jugs of OJ. Like that's what I could do. Um, and then we would eat out. We, we, you know, we have ordered a ton of pizza in our family. We've ordered a ton of Chinese food. But today the typical day is, um, is a lot less kerfuffle. There's a lot less kinetic energy around it, which I'm super grateful for. Um, so there's a stillness in the house that I enjoy. And now oh. connected through Zoom, I feel like we're working all the time um, anyway. So, oh, we got a question from Valerie Glenn. Hi, Valerie. What kind of Parmesan do you recommend for risotto, sir? Great question. I'm using Grana Padano today. 
I use Grana Padano. You could use Parmesan Reggiano. Uh, pecorino is not the best because it's really salty. You got to watch your pecorino. Uh, but Grana Padano or Parmesan Reggiano would be my two favorite. So have I? Should I have put Parmesan into my risotto? No, no, no. We're gonna do that right now. So and I just put a little bit, like two sprigs of thyme. That's it. And we just wanted to salt and pepper a little bit more, correct? Okay, we're gonna do. We're gonna go right now. We're gonna turn off the heat. Turn it off. Okay. But two pinches of Parmesan. Two, but two pinches. I don't even know what that means. What, like how many fingers? Oh, like a pinch of salt. Two of these. Put two ounces. One, two. Okay, I'm gonna do bigger because I love cheese. <laughs> do three. Do as much as you want. I'm doing three because this looks, it looks well. I'm doing. I'm doing four because you said I could. Yeah. All right. And I put one more. But teaspoon of butter. Oh, a teaspoon of butter. Okay. Got it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do a one count of extra virgin olive oil. One. One. Okay. Okay. Got it. That's off the heat. And now I'm gonna really stir that in. And this we call this off the heat, adding that butter. Mantecare. Okay? We're adding the butter off the heat. Mantecare. You, you shake the pan just a little bit. I'm shaking the pan. That's bring that really extra special sauce. Oh boy, that's just, it looks good, Mark. Yeah, you did good, I can already tell. Now, the key to baking soda, I like a bowl, I like it on a flat plate, okay? That's me, you can put it in a bowl if you wish, okay? I'm gonna taste it, I think. I'm gonna do exactly that. What color, what color is your plate? Is it white? I have a white plate. Yeah, so is that a chef thing? Is it to show the color of the food? Uh, sometimes, I, that's all I really have. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> it's just what you have. <laughs> I've got like bright colored, like they're all bright oh, orange. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Fun, but I often wonder whether the food I don't cook would present better on white plates. Yeah. I, I think you nailed the food. And when you're sitting down eating with people you love, who cares what it's served on? Exactly. And a lot of ours are to-go containers, so it matters even less. Oh, it looks beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna put this. I think I've kind of exceeded my own expectation for myself. Um, oh, what, oh, what are you doing now? Yeah, you know, it kind of starts to spread a little bit. What'd you put on there? What is that? That's all my mushrooms. Oh, oh, okay. Now I go, now I go cheese again. Oh. That's now a good Okay, and if you wish, you could go a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I wish. I, I, I wish with you, my friend, wherever you wish I follow. And that is. Time. Look at that. Let's all, let's all do a toast to Poonam and Mark. As soon as Poonam gets hers ready, we are. Okay. All... So yours is a little bit liquidier. Mine's a little bit. Okay. So, take a look. Oh, geez, that's perfect. She is that perfect? Poonam and Mark, it is beautiful. So there are 32 people, 32 people on this call, and I'd like all of you to just take note of the fact that the word perfect in my cooking were used in this same sentence, because this is going to be the only time. Mark Este, not only are you a world-class chef and a world-class humanitarian, you are now also officially a magician. Thank you. <laughs> Poonam and Mark, if you could see all the comments before you sign off in there about everybody wanting you to do a cooking show, saying how awesome you are. And Chef Mark, we have a surprise for you. Oh. It, was, it was March 14th when Poonam called Elizabeth Blau and I and said, are you in for a way to help make sure that no one falls through the cracks? And it has been such a beautiful, challenging and rewarding um, journey and super excited to be on it with you. As our thank you to you from the advisory committee, there is a check, a donation somewhere in your kitchen in an envelope, and it is enough to provide meals to 167 food insecure people in Northern Nevada. So on behalf of all of us, thank you for all that you do for delivering with dignity. And Mark Estee, Mark Estee. 
unless you think he's serious all the time, he sent me the, the ingredients for tonight. There was a special little surprise gift just because he loves me. And as I thought, oh my gosh, a surprise gift. Maybe it's a semi-precious gemstone or um, tropical flowers. But let me show you what he gave me. <laughs> Is that adorable? So I've got a tile. I, I, turn, I like to surround myself in my home with things that make my heart happy. So this is a little baby girl that belongs to a, a close friend of mine. And see how her mouth is? So I've got her now sitting right next to the chicken. Because see how close, see how they're the same? So it makes my heart smile every time I see it. And so thank you, Mark. Um, and I'll look forward to the next opportunity where it might be a, um, a semi-precious gem or a chapel flower. When you did the squeaker punam, you got my dog's bark. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Judy. <laughs> Mike, we can book that check, Michael. We can book that check. All right, and I'll turn it over to Heather. Heather, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Wow, Chef Mark and Poonam. I feel like I can smell those delicious dishes right in front of you. God, you did a great job. I have to say, too, I was almost in stitches several times laughing. You guys are quite the, the funny crew over here. Listen, here's the great. There are lots of messages from the, from the <laughs> chat room from oh, those of you that prepared this at home that are absolutely delighted and impressed with yourselves because you've prepared delicious risotto. So that's some credit to you for doing great work and following directions. And Mark Este, thanks for giving us a chance to do something we could all excel at. Uh, thank you. Thank you both so much. So just for everybody on the line, we will make sure that you have access to these instructions. We are recording tonight so that you might have an opportunity to watch it again and have fun in your kitchen if you chose not to cook this evening. I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you for this wonderful, unique opportunity tonight, Mark and Poonam, to be in your kitchen, to have a window into your worlds, your perspectives, and your hearts. Thank you for delivering laughter to our evening. I know I was laughing, as I mentioned several times. Um, we're so inspired by you, and I'm completely moved by some of what you shared tonight. So I just wanted to recap what landed for me. Poonam, I appreciated that you validated for all of us that the world we're living in right now has allowed you to reflect on what makes you tick what really matters and that you've become aware of boundaries that we control in terms of fear, which I think is a really big um, concept that we're all grappling with right now. It's easy to get lost, you said, in all that we cannot control. I know it really inspired me when you said, and I think I can speak for everybody on the line too, um, that we're so inspired that your reason to get up every morning has become more about putting yourself in service of others. So thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for bringing joy to our evening. And thank you for being a wonderful leader in both ends of the state. We love you. Oh, I love you too. Thank you, Heather. That's really sweet. Related to social equity, Chef Mark, I love that you said it's about time and that this time it feels different that if we all take a bite, we can eat the whole thing. I love that. That actually made me think of when I'm out to eat with my family, we all just kind of share the same dessert, right? And it put perspective into, yeah, we can do this together. We don't all have to do the heavy lifting, which um, I'm gonna have that visual with me forever now, so thank you. And it also is related to, we can make this change together. We all can do our part, whatever that feels like. Um, and some of the things that you shared about your company um, doing and making sure that you're confronting racism when you see it, having great hiring and training practices, you suggested that we give opportunities to equal, um, equal opportunities across the board and being open to having discussions as a group, supporting people who might not be willing to change. All of those things are so wonderful and tangible in terms of takeaways that I feel like I can implement into my own life personally and professionally. Thank you, thank you for everything. Your ability to create a fun and engaging environment, even if you are or are not cooking. Thank you for your ability to allow us to have fun and create a dish that I think Poonam is pretty proud of right now. I have, um, I have knocked it out of the ballpark. <laughs> and it's a little pathetic that I have to say it, but I'm gonna <laughs> say it because it is a sad day when a puppy won't wag its own tail. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wag my own tail. And I just want to um, say cheers to everybody. Uh, you know, last year, this time we were at the Trade Talks and it was a really extraordinary 
coming together. And this is a differently extraordinary coming together. And so I salute all of you and wish you well. And for those of you that have noticed how much of this I'm chugging down, it's because I've got my stemware. This is water. <laughs> so, <laughs> so chug a lug. Let's chug a lug. And here's to you. I here. love that. All right, my friends, I just want to briefly wrap up a few <laughs> items for you. Ahead of tomorrow's big day, thank you, Poonam and Mark, again, for getting us in the spirit of philanthropy and for nourishing our souls with laughter, authenticity, and wisdom. And to our special guests tuning in from all over tonight, thank you all so much for the gift of your time. We hope you're feeling inspired and energized for some really fun and meaningful content tomorrow. We encourage you to double check that you have your special link to access the summit. You should have that in your inbox. And also you received a digital program today that will give you a thorough list of who is speaking tomorrow and when. Please contact me directly if you have any issues finding either of those items and I will make sure you have access. And that's all folks. May you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you again to our sponsors, our committee members, Poonam and Chef Mark. We look forward to being together to get we look forward to being together again with you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Good night. <laughs>